8, verse 20 to 22, and Isaiah 55, 8 to 13. Let me say it again. Genesis 8, verse 20 through 22, then Isaiah 55, 8 to 13. And it says, Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took off every clean animal and of every clean bird and burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a soothing aroma. And the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake. Although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, nor will I again Destroy every living thing as I've done. While the earth remains, seed time, harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. Then Isaiah 55, verse 8 to 13. Isaiah 55. I think we've been hearing this one all year long. Isaiah 55, we've been talking out of that all year long during our giving time. Say, under, under an open heaven. Yeah. Isaiah 55, verse 8 to 13. Isaiah 55, verse 8 to 13. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, say the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, make it rain forth and bud, then make give seed to the soil and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth to my mouth, it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out with joy, and be led out with peace. The mountains and the hills shall bring forth shall break forth to sing before you, and the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorns shall come up the cypress tree. Instead of the brow shall come up the myrtle tree, and shall be to the Lord for a name, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Tell his neighbor, say, seed, seed to the soil, and, and harvest for the reaper. Say, seed, seed to the soil, and, and harvest for the reaper. For the reaper. Amen. Have a seed. Amen. Under and open heaven. God wants to encourage you today that when you sow a seed to him, you shall reap a harvest. That's a one statement that's loaded. When you sow a seed to God, you shall reap a harvest. Notice I didn't say sow a seed to the church. I didn't say sow a seed to the pastor. I didn't say sow a seed to a ministry or to an organization. When I sow my seed, I'm sowing my seed to God. And God will cause us to reap a harvest yes. under an open heaven. We start out with Noah. The Bible says that God looked at every imagination and an inclination of man was evil. And God says, I'm repented, I even made man. And God says, I'm going to destroy the whole earth and every living thing in it. You know the story of Noah. Everybody know that, right? And we talked about uh, the set time of God's favor. We talked about grace. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And God saved Noah, his wife, three sons, and three daughter-in-laws. And, and, and some creatures he took seven. See, y'all going to say every dose. No, some creatures he took seven. Go back and read. And then other creatures he took two. But every living creature, God preserved some by seven and some by two. Let me stop and, and give you a little thing on that. Seven is God's number for what? Completion. Seven means I'm going to make you mature, I'm make you whole and complete you. So sometimes God took seven, and two is a number of what? Agreement. So some of them God took an agreement, 
That's something God took in completion. But seven plus two equals nine, and nine means the what? The birth something. God's allowed a birth, a new earth. Oh, I don't know if you caught me right there. Maybe I'm, I'm going too fast. Some it took in seven. Completion. Some it took in two in agreement. But then seven plus two equals nine, and nine is God's number for what? Birthing. And it's God's allowed birth a new earth. So Noah came and brought to God an offering of every clean bird he could put his hand on. And the Bible says God liked the smell of the aroma. If you're taking notes this morning, the first thing we can understand is that when you bring an offering to God, God likes the smell of a sweet offering. God likes the smell of the aroma of you offering yourself. First, I offer myself. Second, I offer my time. Third, I offer what? By what? I offer my talents, and fourth, I offer God back to him what he gave to me, my finances, my treasure. Let me say it again. Offer myself, offer my time, offer my talent, and then I give God of my treasure. And it ought to be a sweet aroma to God. How many came to give God something? Amen. Here's what church is turning to. Church is turning to people getting something from God. Everybody wants something from God. I want God to heal me. I want God to bless me. I want God to give me favor. I want God to give me grace. Lord, I need mercy. Lord, I need you to do this. Lord, and I understand God is in the business of providing for us. But to get past the provision of God and to live in the promise of God and live in a place in which I'm blessed, to live in a place of more than enough, I got to quit just getting something from God and start giving something to God. Lord, I'm available to you. I'm willing. Here I am. I want to bring an offering to you. So when I sing, I'm offering to God. When I clap my hands, I'm offering to God. When I wave my hand, I'm offering to God. When I dance, I'm offering to God. When I come to worship, I'm offering to God. When I praise, I'm making an offering to God. You thought you were just trying to psych yourself out. You thought you were trying to entertain somebody. We thought we were trying to pump you up. No, it's not about us. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's all about God. I'm giving Giving my best to God. Yeah. And I come to bring an offering. And so when I give even my money, I'm giving to who? God. God. Right. And when God smelled that aroma, and smelled what Noah gave him, the aroma, the Bible says, the aroma of the offering, God said to Noah, he said, no longer will I destroy every living creature. No longer will I do this and hold back the harvest from the land. Because why? Even though man is evil, evil even from his youth and his imagination is wrong, and everything about him is wrong, because I like the offering that you're going to bring to me, I'm going to never destroy the earth, and I will always give you seed time and harvest. Hot and cold, winter and summer, spring and fall. I'm going to always make sure that I put something in place that if you sow seed, you'll get a harvest. Yeah, yeah. Seed time and harvest. Sowing and reaping. Write that down. Seed time and harvest equals sowing and reaping. Let me say it again. Seed time and harvest is equal to sowing and reaping. Seed time is the sowing. Reaping is the harvest. How many of you want to give God a seed? Amen. I want to give God a seed. Yes. Why is it called a seed? Because if you didn't need it, it would not be a seed. But because you need it, it's a seed. How many of you have all the money that you need to do everything you need to do and you won't never need no more money ever in your life again? Anybody? Everybody? Somebody? Huh? No. We all going to need some more what? Currency. Do you believe that? Yeah. Okay. I, this wasn't even in my scriptures to write down and to start talk about it. But go to Ecclesiastes 10 and 19. This wasn't even in my stuff, but I need, I think we're going to be, over the next few weeks, it's going to come up. Over the next few weeks, this scripture is going to jump back at us every time. Because we got to have, understand how to have a relationship with money. We need to have, know how to have a relationship with money. I think some of us have a kind of understanding of money the wrong way. We either think money is evil, or we think, or we love money. And both of those things are wrong. You cannot love money, but money is not evil either. Let me say it again. I cannot love money. If I love money, I'll never give God a seed because I'm trying to hold on to my money. 
If I think money is evil, I don't know how to deal with money because I'm trying to run for money and money needs to run to me. Money coming to me now. Let's see how I got quiet. Hmm? Please ask 1019. Watch this. A feast is made for laughter. Anybody like to laugh? Oh, yeah. You know how you get good laughter when you have a good what? Feast, right? Mm -hmm. Anybody ever see a bunch of people on a bunch of food? What happens? We all start grinning and laughing. All the clones, the real people. Well, we eating up a good time, right? Laughter. I'm, I'm still preaching. I'm still preaching. Feast, feast is made laugh. And wine makes what? Yeah. Mary. Anybody have a little wine like that? No. Little wine good for your stomach too. You didn't know that? The Bible says that. The Bible says don't be drunk with wine. As a matter of fact, I believe in Bible uh, college this morning. Jesus turned water into what? Wine. And Jesus drinking wine. Come on. Anyway, that's another whole sermon, right? Don't be drunk with wine. You see, let me tell you something. Three things right here we're going to talk about. Number one, you cannot run for food. You need food, right? A feast is made for laughter. Just don't what? Overeat. Don't run for wine. A little wine is good for your stomach. Just don't get drunk with wine. I'm teaching the Bible. And the third thing it says, and money is the answer to what? All things. I can't run for money. I need money. Just don't what? Love money. I'm teaching now. I'm teaching. So if I need money and I don't have enough of money, I'm back to my original point, my, my need becomes a what? A seed so that I can get some more what? Money. If I need time, I don't have enough of time, I come and give God some time so that what I can get some more what? Time. You have 168 hours in a week, right? How many of you got enough time to do everything you need to do? None of us have enough time, right? But if I give God what? From 9.30 to 1, in our case, or any time you wish it might be, it might be 8 o'clock to, to 10.30 for somebody else. It might be an evening service on Saturday night from 6 o'clock to 8.30. I don't know what it might be. But if you give God a tithe, a piece, a investment of your time, God will help you get what? More what? Time. Give God some of your talent. And God will do what? Multiply your talent so that you what? Get influence, get promotion, have your career to blow up in your face and do something great because you give God some of your what? Talent. You want some more money? How many of need more money? You're not going to be on the video. I'm the only one on the video with my hand right there. How many need more money, right? Raise your hand right now. Raise them like you really care, right? Well, I got to give God, come on, to the source of my money, to supply. He's the source. How many know he's the source? Yeah. We are, we're just getting the resource. He is the source. I got to give him some so I can get me some, right? That's what I'm talking about. Seed time and harvest is equal to sowing and reaping. Whatever you need God to do in your life, you got to sow it so you can reap it. Lord, I need favor. You need to sow some favor so you can get some favor. Give somebody else some favor, you'll get some favor. I need mercy. Sow some what? Mercy. You'll get some what? Mercy. That's in the Bible. The Bible says this one man owed somebody some money, and if he gave him a whole bunch of money, somebody else owed him a little bit of money, he choked that man. And when he choked him, he said, wait a minute. Oh, no, 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 no. Come back here. You choked that man for that little bit of money, now I'm going to put you in prison until you can pay mine. He didn't show mercy, so he didn't get no what? Mercy. mercy. Jesus said this. He says, if we don't forgive others, how will our Heavenly Father do what? Forgive. If I need God to forgive me, I need to do what? Forgive somebody else. How many of you need help sometimes? If I need help, I need to give somebody some what? Help. Well, I need to sow so I can what? Reap. Seed time and harvest. Under open heaven. I'm talking about the principle of under open heaven. Look what it says in Isaiah 55. My ways are not your ways, nor are my thoughts your thoughts. I mean, you know, that as high as the heaven off from the earth, so our ways different from God's ways. That when God will say go left, we'll go right. When God says go up, we'll go down. Do you understand that? Amen. That's the sinful nature of man. That our ways are not like God's ways. And that's why you got to return back to the Lord. So we may well do what? He may show us his ways. But look what he says. He says, return unto him. That's what it says in the sixth verse and seventh verse. Seek your wife may be found. When he gets down to the to the to the eight nine verse, it says, "Hide heaven and the earth, show my ways, hide in your ways and my thoughts and your thoughts." For as the rain comes down and snow from heaven, how many of you see rain and snow come down? This morning we had a little bit of rain, right? 
You know what the rain does? It gets into the soil, watch this, and, and, and it waters the earth. How many are so glad when it rains you get green grass? Mm. Right? Even if you live in a neighborhood, you want green grass so that what? You won't have what? Your yard will look what? Pretty, right? Or beautiful, right? If you have, if you're agricultural like I am and have animals to feed, to eat grass like horses, you want green grass so that have what? Something to what? Do what? Eat. Eat stay out of my pockets, right? Am I right? You, you're so glad when it rains because it waters the earth and brings forth seed and bud. How many want God to rain down in your life? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh? How many want God to rain down in your life? Yeah. Look what he says. Watch this. He says, test me and try me in this. Malachi, the third chapter, right? And see if I won't do what? Prove me and see if I won't open the windows of heaven and pour out, come on, a blessing that I have no room to receive. Open the flood that's heaven. And let it do what? Rain. I want God to pour out a blessing. I want God to pour out a blessing. Yeah. But I want to do what? First I got to put a seed in the ground so God can want to water that seed. Yeah. God ain't going to water no seed. God's not going to water a barren place. God would only water good ground. God would only water seed that you put in the ground. Do you understand that? God won't waste his blessing on us if that's a way you can put that terminology, wasting blessing, because God ain't in the, in, the, in, the, in the business of wasting blessing. But God would never put nothing on us that we can receive from him if we're not willing to invest in him. God will never open the windows of heaven if you don't test me and try me. But if I put a seed in the ground, I'm giving a seed to God, not to man. God's going to water that seed. Come on. Watch what he says. He says, I'll water it. It shall bring forth and bud. That it may give seed to the soil. Watch this. Woo! How I many so glad God bless you with a way to make income? Yes, Whether it be by job, career, right? Yes. When you get that income that God gave you, God says, that income I'm giving you is only your seed for your blessing. Because your income is not enough for you to be blessed. It's only the seed. So what you do? If you could live off just that income without that God gave you, if God, if the, if when you went to work for the man and he gave you a check and that check he gave you mean you didn't have to work no more, then you could shut it down. How many of the paycheck you got on last week or last time you got paid or any time the last time you got paid, you don't have to get no more money? Anybody? But you got to do what? Go back to what? Work. work again. How can you go back to work if you couldn't get out of bed? How can you go back to work if we came to you and there was no pulse, no heartbeat, no breathing? Anybody? Could you go to work like that? No. What they would do, they would call the what? The medical examiner and the what? And the coroner, right? Because why? You don't have anything left in you to go to work, right? But because you know that you're going to have breath to breathe, you know that you're going to, well, air to breathe, they're going to put it that way, air to breathe, you know that what you're going to have strength in your body, you're going to have use of your muscles, and your faculties, as the people all focus say, they call it faculties, right? Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and they have mental and, and good sense, clothed in your right mind, right? Yeah. I woke up this morning, I was clothed in my right mind. You ever heard that before? Mm -hmm. And you got strength in your body, right? Yeah. And you got the ability mm -hmm. to do your job. How, what if you went to your job tomorrow and you couldn't do your job? Mm -hmm. Well, you look at the thing, what if I went to teach and I couldn't even read anymore? Huh? Mm -hmm. Or couldn't even talk anymore to the students? What would happen then? I couldn't do it, but who gives me the ability to do all this? Wow. Who does it? Riggins does, right? No, no, no. Huh? Evolution of man through Darwin, right? No. Who gave me the ability to do it? Who God. gives me the ability to do it? God. God. So because God's given me the ability to do that so I can get some more income, what I got to do is give seed back to him so I can keep getting the what? Increase. I want to increase. increase. And not only will God give you increase to get the next check, but God says, I'll get you to a place where you won't have to work for nobody. If you really believe me, you can make it on your own and have your own way, produce your own income if you keep on blessing me. Do you believe that? How many know God will set you up that you don't have to work for nobody else? Amen. I don't know. We're ready for that. That's going to be the next couple of weeks. You get a place in your life where God can bless you till you got to give money away just to stay afloat. Do you understand that? You got too much self drowning in this stuff. Right? Oh, I don't know if y'all believe that, huh? Right. I mean, believe that God gives so, God, God bless you so much, you have to be giving it away. Amen. 
And we badly struggling and surviving sometimes. I say we, I mean we as a people, we as church folk, we as folk that come and hear the word of God. Because why? Because we don't even know how to give God the seed to get the next blessing. I got to keep giving seed to multiply. You know my favorite seed I like in the whole world? I don't know why I like this. How many of you know, you know what an okra is? Oh, yeah. That's what he wanted at the feast. He wanted okra, so he wanted okra at the feast. <laughs> but you know, I was growing up, my parents, we had a garden. And they let that okra dry up, right? And where they going to get out that okra? A bunch of little what? Seeds. It's full of seeds. Full of seeds. Just think about it. Your life that God bless you with, that you keep giving to God, you give giving God a handful of seed. Come on. And the more seed you're giving to God, just, just how much is going to multiply. Say, multiply me. Good God Almighty. Just think of the seed that God has inside of us that we are able to give, whether it be our time, our talent, our treasure, or ourselves. He says, why? Because God says, when I sit out a word, it shall not return to me, boy. How many know God sent you a word? Amen. God sent me a word. Say, won't return to me, boy, but it shall come to the thing I sent for it to do. God said, I've sent my word in your life. You shall multiply. You shall be blessed. You shall be on the top and not on the bottom. You should even you know we talk about obeying God, Deuteronomy 28 chapter. He says, You'll be in the front and not in the back. He says, You're gonna be the lender, not the borrower. Come on, God says, I shall increase you. God says, When I send a word, it won't return to me void. He shall do the thing I sent for it to do. So when you put seed in the ground, don't worry about it. Just know that God's gonna multiply my seed. I'm gonna be blessed just like that. And oh, let me go farther. Well, you don't have to worry about the bill collector calling you. Am I right? You don't have to worry about whether you have a plate of something to drive. You don't have to worry about if your kids can get an education. That's what we're talking about. Wherever they believe on whatever level, whatever area of their life, you don't have to worry about money because they learn how to what? Sow and what? Reap. Say sowing and reaping. We don't teach this enough. We don't teach it enough. So people are upset about money about church. I mean, you know people are upset about money in church. Yes, they are. They are. Yes. Because we don't understand the concept. Because it shouldn't be evil whenever God bless the pastor and leader that we got a lot of stuff and a bunch of poor people in the church that ain't going to work either. Pastor got two cars, a Bentley, and a jet, and a helicopter. But I can't pay my light bills, and he won't even see me about it. Say something wrong with that, too. Say something wrong with that, too, right? Oh, yeah. Am I right? Amen. Why buy a Bentley? Well, you can have this. You can get a luxury car, but it don't have to be no Bentley. Just do forty thousand instead of eighty thousand, one hundred twenty thousand, and then take the difference of that eighty thousand. Do what? Give it to somebody what that needs some help, right? Yeah, Put in somebody an account that can be interest making to help somebody pay their bills, right? Say so real people, real life, real answer. See, we have to understand. Say money is the answer to all things. Sowing and reaping. Now watch this. I'm back, I'm back to second Corinthians. I said all to say, when you're ready to lift the offering, we got a pumpkin prime folk. Y'all thought I lost my point. You can't be God given, no matter how hard you try. Look like you're a funeral. The more you give, mm -hmm, the more it gives to you. Don't they do that? Keep on giving. It'd be bad to make it. No, it's really true. I'm ready to hand him two dollars. The okay. Be God giving, no matter how hard you try. And so the preacher, we need to pump it up in here. Come on, pump it up, pump it up. Oh, and they get, get this shot with me to try to get my money. No, say, come, come with a cheerful heart. Amen. I come in waving my offering. I come in believing whatever I got that God already was going to bless me with it, and I'm going to bless God with it. I ain't got nobody. Tell me how many dollars to put behind it. I hope y'all put something in the zero. No, no, tell me that. But tell me, pull out the checkbook, not out your wife. Because God already know when I come, I'm ready. Say, I'm ready. To bless God with the best that I got. Say, real people. That's what I'm talking about. God loves a what? Shiver giver. You make all grace increase to you. That you may have all sufficient and have an abundance, say, abundance. To everything I need. He's given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. And now he supplies seed to the soil and bread to the eater. And so he would, he would have food, supply, and multiply the seed. Let me want God to multiply your seed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you have sought to increase the fruits of the righteousness. Come on. Say, God, God. will increase me. Galatians 6, 
79 says this. It says that God is not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever man soweth, that shall he what? Reap. reap. If you sow to the flesh, you're going to reap corruption. If you sow to the spirit, you'll reap what? Life. But look what it says. And don't be weary in well-doing. We shall reap if we fight not. Say, so don't get weary in well-doing. Pastor, I've been sowing seed a long time. I'm tired of sowing seed. I mean, you get tired of sowing seed. The real people. Remember, you're not on the camera. I'm not on the raise man. I mean, you're tired of sowing seed. <laughs> huh? Well, Pastor, I ain't worried about no, I'm tired of sowing seed. He said, don't be weary with it, because if you don't fight, you will reap in what? Say, do season. Not my season, not you season, but do season. You should reap and fight now. You should reap and do seeds. I mean, no God gonna get called you to reap. Well, if that didn't make you excited, or if you didn't get happy about that, Pastor, the truth is, you said I gotta be a cheerful giver. It hurts sometimes when I give. How I many you know it hurts sometimes when you give? Does it hurt sometimes? It used to. You know why it hurts sometimes though? Sometimes it hurt because of the way we didn't have mis we may have misunderstanding in our lives. We we sometimes got over to debt. Before we met God, and now we're trying to get out of debt and, and try to give God what's his too, right? How many of you know that? Some of us already knew God, but we still didn't make good decisions, am I right? right? And so it hurt because why? We got to try to take care of God and the man. And I'm not talking about the man by color, I'm talking about the man by what you owe. Right? And so it hurts sometimes or so. How many sometimes you have to cry when you're so? That's, I, I'm a cheerful giver, but I'm crying, it hurts. Am I right? Amen. I don't know if it's tears of joy or tears of sorrow, but I'm cheerful, but I'm crying. Am I right? Because it hurt when you saw it. Am I right? Why? Yeah, I got some real people in here. Look at Psalm 126, and verse 5. I'm closing with this. Saw it and reap it. Saw it and reap it. Psalm 126 and 5. It hurts sometimes. Here's what happened. In the old, in the Jewish time, sometimes they would have a bad season for seed. And the crop they had the year before wasn't that good. They didn't have a lot of okra to come up. They only had a few okra. They didn't have a lot of produce to come up. So the seed was not a lot. And they had to take a chance on sowing. I mean, no, sometimes you take a chance. You know what that chance is called when it comes to God? It's not a chance. It's called faith. Amen. In the world, you take a chance. With God, you use faith. Yes, I mean, no, you have to sow in faith sometimes. Yes. Let me say it again. In the world, you take a chance. You might go down to the, to the, to, to the lotto, take a chance. You may go to the casino, take a chance. You might even do... You don't have to do anything with gambling. It may be that I just want to invest in something, maybe the stock market, or maybe I just want to try to buy a new product to try it out and see if I can do a new job. And I take a chance. I open up a new business, I take a chance. That's in the world. When it comes to God, you got to operate in what? Faith. It's like taking a chance because you can't see. How many know you can't see the blessing? But you believe in the blessing. Have you ever seen God? But I believe in God. So you take a faith. He says, and so you got the seed in your hand, but it's precious seed. Say precious seed. I didn't tell you to say anything else really this morning, but don't just say precious seed. It's precious. In other words, if you lose the seed, you're in trouble. If this seed don't come up, you're going down. If you sow this seed, you don't get nothing back on it. You're out. It's precious seed. He says, and those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes for a weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheep with him. Watch this. God says if you have faith to believe, that if it hurts when you're sowing the seed, if you cry when you're sowing the seed, if you sacrifice when you're sowing the seed, if you don't pay a bill sometime when you're sowing the seed, when it, when it looks like all you're giving is your last dime, like the woman only had two pennies when you're sowing the seed, you might be weeping, but say, doubtless, say, I believe. I believe. Faith, come on, Lord, I believe. Help my what? Unbeliever. Doubtless, I shall return.
return rejoicing with my sheaves. I'll come back with a harvest. Put it out on the water and see if God don't send it back. Put it in the ground and see if God don't make it come grow up for you. Come on, sow the seed and see if you won't get no harvest. Come on, if you sow, you shall reap. If you seed, you'll get a harvest. Don't you bless God about that. I'm crying going out, but I'm going to be happy coming back in. I'm crying giving, but I'm going to be rejoicing when I receive. God's going to multiply me and bless me beyond my need because I decided to sow a seed. God gonna bless me out of my mind because I believe God that while I was crying that God was gonna bless me like this and now I got the increase because I'm gonna sow in tears but reap in joy. You ought to bless yes, God for that. Yes, yes. Come on, seed time and harvest. Seed time and harvest. Seed time and harvest. Oh, it hurts, but it's gonna be happy be happy after a while. I gotta trust God. That even when I don't have it, that I can bless God with.